So I've been living alone now for a, it's probably since 2022. And I remember when I lived at home with my family, it was something that I just couldn't wait to have happen. To have my own place, my own things, my own schedule, my own life. And now that I've been doing it for nearly three years, I can't exactly remember. I'm not sure if it was 2021 or 2022. It's definitely kind of found itself in the category of just the mundane kind of there's nothing really new to it and it is sometimes a challenge to wake up every morning alone to go home to your house at the end of the day alone to cook for just one person to bake alone to watch your favorite shows alone to just be alone it definitely has been a challenge but something that's really helped is to find the beauty and the joy in things and so decorating for fall and as you can see in the video here, cleaning my kitchen and just showing myself some love by taking care of my space has definitely helped. And a week or so ago, I ordered some things on Amazon and picked up this Nespresso machine. And I have been wanting a latte making machine, little coffee station area for so long. And I was doing the instant coffee and then I thought, no, I need to cave put some money down and get an espresso machine so I can make fancy lattes and espresso drinks and I'm so happy that I did and I feel like this has helped it's helped those moments that feel really lonely where I'm alone and no one's there to like treat myself to a fancy drink and to be intentional with just how I care for myself and this is something that just makes me so happy and so yeah I don't know obviously the living situation of many of you but have you ever lived on your own um, what were your initial thoughts going into it <laughs> did you think it would always be peaches and cream you know or have you realized that it isn't always <laughs> that sweet um, but yeah I definitely think that's why reading has also become a love of mine too because although I'm alone and there's no one here to spend time and opening a book and diving into someone else's world and traveling to places unknown far and wide with them and experiencing something that I can't hear in the physical um, has really been something I have fallen in love with because I am alone <laughs> most of the time majority of the time obviously I have my mom and my sisters and different family and friends you know around but I'm alone majority of the time um, I am introverted too and so I think that there are those parts of me that love my alone time and love the fact that I do live alone but I do think it gets to me every now and again um, but yeah I really I'm just thankful for everything and try to remind myself to be thankful of everything. The things that are small and mundane like making a cup of coffee in the morning or cleaning your kitchen, folding your laundry, watering your plants, but it's just a way of self-care. You know, it's a way to show yourself that I appreciate you, I appreciate where you are in life even though you're not where you thought you'd be at 28 living alone and really just being in a time in your life where everything is really unknown. Um, my life has gone through a huge transition over the last year and it's been such a tremendous challenge and I don't know, I just didn't think this is where I'd be at this point in my life and so taking care of myself in these ways has really helped and I even bought those plastic cups from Amazon because I love Starbucks but to get Starbucks at home you're paying almost like maybe even up to nine dollars a drink and I just feel like it's not financially wise and so I bought those fun little drink cups for myself to use at home and all my fancy syrups just so that I can experience the joy of Starbucks but in my own home and I think that's just amazing but yeah, here in Michigan, the weather's finally getting crisp. I mean, we are having 60 degree weather, crisp mornings in like the mid to low 40s. The sun is still shining, the leaves are changing, and it's just beautiful. So I've been getting back into my hobby of running as well recently. And again, it's another one of those areas to show that care to yourself, taking walks and running. I've been doing a lot of yoga and stretching 
because it's really easy to just get into your head get into the fact that you are by yourself that you don't have many friends that you've maybe like me never had a best friend um it's actually kind of strange to think about but i've never had a best friend really never had consistent true friends and it's always been a challenge for me but when i go out for walks and i go for my runs and I see all the things that my body can do and who I am. I don't look at it as maybe there's something wrong with me, why my life is the way that it is, or why I don't have many friends, or why I'm alone. Instead, I can say, wow, I'm such a strong, capable person who's doing things to better herself. And yeah, so that's kind of a little journey that I have been on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's life, you know. I have constantly over the last couple of weeks had the little saying in my head that in the unknown anything can happen and that's really comforting I think when you kind of expect your day today and what will happen this week what will happen next week and all of the responsibilities that you have it's kind of hard to think out of the box or to look at your situation that something spontaneous and different could happen but when you realize that in the unknown where you really don't know what tomorrow will actually bring and you actually have no plans and you don't know what your life is gonna look like even within the next few hours, that feeling of in the unknown, anything can happen. It's so peaceful. And so that's just made me really happy over the last few weeks. And as you can see, we're making sourdough, you guys. Okay, so I started this sourdough journey about four or five six ish months ago i obviously love to bake but i've never baked to such an extent like with sourdough i definitely have a dream of one day having my own family and homeschooling and having chickens and fresh milk and just being kind of that like homestead mom and I follow a lot of people on YouTube and sourdough came across my screen and I was like, wait, I need to do this. I am a girly with a lot of stomach IBS issues and sourdough is really good for your gut. And so I, with all my blood, sweat and tears, (laughs) made my own sourdough as you saw me pouring in the beginning and I fed it. It was nice and bubbly and active and ready to be put into this sourdough recipe. I'm currently weighing everything as well on a scale. So we have the sourdough, we have lukewarm water, and we're adding in some honey and we're whisking it. You don't have to add in the honey, but I do like adding it in. Once we whisk it all up, we also add in our salt. And it seemed like a lot of salt, but when you realize how much flour you're putting in, it's really not that much. Um, And then you add in your flour. We're gonna do a little bit of mixing, not in the way of kneading and it's gonna come out really delicious in the end. Um, But sourdough also was something for me that was just so exciting. You know, because when you first start making your own little batch of sourdough um, starter, it doesn't do anything for like the first week. And you're just like, I'm failing at life. And then the more that you work at it, the more that you are dedicated to what you're doing, You really get to see the fruits of your labor and that 10th day when it started to double in size and get super bubbly and then the loaves of bread I was making and the bagels, it just really brought me so much joy that even in a time of such uncertainty, in a time where I feel really alone and I'm struggling with a lot of different things, I just made some sourdough starter and I'm baking so much bread and bagels and it's making me so happy. And so yes, we've mixed it up and I'm gonna leave it to rest because what you have to do with sourdough is you have to do some stretch and folds. So three to four stretch and folds we're gonna complete with dabbing our hands a little bit in water, pulling each side of the dough. And in that process, it's going to absorb all of the water within the flour so it's not going to look so separated as it kind of looks right now and then in the end you're going to have this beautiful plump little ball of sourdough bread that you're going to leave overnight to ferment and get bubbly and to grow and to just be so ready to bake in the morning and this is probably one of my favorite parts the stretch and folds because you really do see the change in your sourdough 
in this process because once you initially mix it, it looks really dry. It looks like it needs more water, it looks kind of crumbly. But then after you do your stretch and folds and you do that fourth or that third one, it's gonna look so beautiful. So yeah, are you guys bakers? Do you love to bake? I definitely feel like the fall and the winter bring out a lot of the baking for me. And as you can see, look how soft it is. So we're gonna do one more stretch and fold on this. This is the, I believe the last one in this video here. Can't quite remember, but look how beautiful it's getting. And this, yeah, this was the last stretch and fold. So now I'm gonna cover it with a little plastic and this and leave it overnight. And yeah, we're into the next day of making our sourdough. This candle is the Autumn Chai from Bath & Body Works, you guys. It smells so, so good. Absolutely love it. We're preheating the Dutch oven inside of the oven and look at how big it has gotten. Oh, it just makes me so happy. Each morning when you make a thing of sourdough and you wake up, either your starter is bubbling over the sides or your dough is busting out of the bowl you have it in. It's just so ready to be baked and just makes me so happy. And again, obviously, we had to make a little special drink, our second one ever with our little Nespresso machine before we get to baking. But yeah, I'm just really thankful. Um, I'm thankful for everything that's, that's happened and that's gone on for me. Um, I probably would not have said that three months ago. And even today, it's still hard, but I think being thankful is so important to be thankful for everything even the things that seem like they don't really deserve your thankfulness because they're hard or they're challenging because ultimately they shape you I recently finished a book called The Stranger in the Lifeboat by Mitch Album and it um, just really stood out to me how you can go through really traumatic times but really to stay the course and to be dedicated to the journey that you're on no matter how perilous it is because once you're finished and once you overcome and once you come to the end of that you're gonna have so much that you've gained so much that you can speak on and encourage with because you've been there you've done that you went through it and I definitely feel like this season of my life has really increased my ability to understand people and sympathize with them and just get their point of view especially in terms of like your mental health and the struggles that come with that you know and to be able to really relate and to have encouragement and when you hear this saying that is kind of cliche and kind of annoying of it's going to be brighter one day you know this is only going to last for a moment eventually it's going to pass you know this too shall pass and kind of those cliche things that you hear people say when you're in the heat of the moment and really you don't feel it but then hindsight's 2020. now that i can say i have i believe and hopefully um kind of gone through the big part of this journey that i'm on i can encourage another person that's what that book kind of spoke about at the end like once you get to where you have to go give this information to someone else to help them on their journey as well and so i just really want to take it like that not look at it as how difficult it was and how traumatic it was which it definitely was and how much it's affected me but that because i was seen as being able to bear this i can encourage another person who is going through the same thing or something similar and so yeah, I'm just, I'm really thankful. And now we're doing another one of my favorite parts with sourdough. We're forming it into such a little cute ball here. And then we're going to get baking it. And you push it away from you and you pull it in. It's such a beautiful technique. It's almost just like dancing or, you know, just like yoga, very romantic thing. So we're gonna get our hot Dutch oven out. I believe if the oven was set at 450. We're gonna get it out. Be careful, use your oven mitts. Please do not forget this is boiling, stinking hot. We're gonna plop the little bundle of joy on some parchment paper and then we're going to score it. I don't have a fancy scoring knife. I know they sell them, but I feel like what's, what's not broke, don't fix it. I think that's the saying. And so I just use a sharp knife. It works. It's not that big of a deal, but if you want all the fancy stuff, I'm sure you can find it at the store or on Amazon. We are gonna throw our little baby into the Dutch oven 
and we're gonna put it in for 25 to 30 minutes completely covered. You can add some ice cubes within this if you want to add a little steam, but I didn't do it this time. And we're gonna leave it in for 30 minutes and just let it cook with all of that steam within the Dutch oven, within there, the water that's inside of the bread and just work. And then when we take it out for the first time, we are gonna remove the lid. And this is really gonna help it form that crust and that oven spring, I believe is how, how the sourdough community calls it, it is give it that bouncy texture. And so it looks really nice, but it's not quite done. So we're gonna uncover it and pop it back in there for like 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how hot your oven is and how your oven cooks, and take it out. And once we take it out for the very last time, it will be time to let it cool and oh, look at the golden color. It's lovely. Oh, it's so pretty. This is a smaller batch of a loaf. And um, so usually the loaf looks a lot bigger than this. And also I was on a little bit of a time crunch. And so usually after I shape the ball of dough, I will put it in the freezer to kind of let it, not freezer, oh my God, put it in the refrigerator for a time to kind of just let it sit. And then I will bake it. But today I just kind of went straight in. And so, um, yeah, we're gonna cut it open and we're gonna see and I'm gonna try it a little bit and go from there. But I really do hope that you guys enjoyed this video and that it encouraged you in some way. And I wish you the very best and I'll catch you all in my very next one.